Okay, so um, so the scripture that we're talking about, uh, Galatians 3, verse 28, which says, There's neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. And also Colossians 3 and verse 11, which talks about the disappearing of or the removal of all these separating walls, all these barriers when we come to Christ. So I think that's the verse uh, Avni was referring to. And there are two other, yeah, Galatians 3, 23, 29, 29, right? So when, we, when it says sons, it definitely covers both, you know, sons and daughters of God, because we're saying, you know, uh, you are heirs according to the, uh, to the promise, which means that, you know, both of you, uh, as male, as female, you are heirs according to the promise of God. So, um, yeah, so that, so that difference is also, you know, it's it's not that it's not a barrier, it's not a difference. In Christ, you became you become one. Okay. Um, does that clarify, Avni? Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I think your uh, this thing of uh, you know as uh, in the spirit, you know about sons and daughters, you know that kind of a division, I probably will. We'll look at it. Uh, maybe even during the mentoring session, you can raise that question, right? And we can we can get uh, more inputs from others as well. Okay, so um, so let's continue. Um, so we've been looking at um, how, um, yeah, about uh, the uh, developing the ability to teach well. Okay, so um, you know when we when we look at that, it's um, one one thing is. Um, the ability to communicate, of course, the ability to communicate in, in simple ways uh, what we have received uh, from God and, and to teach and, 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 and everything, you know, comes with it. We are, we are going to look at the, some of the practical aspects of uh, doing the ministry of the teacher. So in that, uh, we look at it uh, a, a, a little more in depth. Uh, but we see that uh, when we look at the life of the Lord Jesus, how he had compassion. So we see that all that comes into play when we are saying developing the ability to, to teach well, right? to have that burden, to have that compassion, um, to be able to hear, to be able to listen, and to be dependent uh, on the Spirit of, uh, on the Holy Spirit, dependent on the Holy Spirit, and to, you know, to receive that wisdom uh, from the Holy Spirit, uh, and, and also, you know, the ability to communicate it, right, uh, um, to flow with the communication, to flow with the uh, thought and to put things uh, in uh, in a very in a, in a simple way, you know, also in an organized manner, so that it it stays right with the with the audience. So um, so those are some things uh, we we can uh, use in order to develop the ability, right? So because it uh, it is something which is very very uh, important. Um, that Paul also mentions who are able to you know teach others. Right. And um, yeah, so uh, one of the other things is also to raise up uh, other teachers. Like, um, like when we look at the fivefold ministry, we see that um, fivefold ministry uh, exists to to equip. Okay, so to equip meaning you know to um, to do the things that they themselves are doing. Right, that also. Right, to equip, to teach, and to impart, and to empower others to do the things that they them they, 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 they do the kind of ministry that they themselves are doing. Okay, the fivefold minister, whether it's a prophet, to do, to teach, uh, and to to walk in whatever they are walking in, to be able to uh, to be able to help the person discover the truth, to help um, you know. I'm using using the word activate. Um, but really, it's to stir up the gift and to you know to walk in it, um, to 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 you know to be alive to these uh, you know to these things, um, to be uh, to discover and to walk in it and 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 so on, right? So, so a teacher also raises up others, just like uh, him or her. Uh, in ministry, to where Paul says, uh, Timothy, the things that you have heard from me, 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, uh, I'm on page 21, the things that you have heard from me, among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach 
others also. So, um, um, so of course, the responsibility to raise up, okay, to uh, to raise up so that uh, this truth can be stewarded well uh, to others also. To so the reach of this uh, truth or uh, the teaching is goes beyond us um, and through the others, and uh, we see this happening in in the in the current uh, the, the Corinthian church and also the in the church at Ephesus where Paul spent time, and we see that the regions uh, around came to know. So, which means that the ones who were trained, uh, who Paul taught, went around teaching others also, went to the surrounding regions and taught others also. So, Paul was, in fact, raising up others just like him who would, you know, faithful, who will be able to teach others. Okay, faithful, uh, who will be able to teach others. So, that's the quality, you know, faithfulness um, and uh, character. Uh, integrity and so on. So faithfulness, which is uh, character, and the ability, which is the skill, right? Character and skill. So, it's, but uh, if you see the order, uh, character uh, coming first, and then the skill, right? So commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Okay. Um, then the the warning or the you know uh, uh, being alert to those who would be false teachers, okay? So um, Second Peter 2, verse 1, and we read about, you know, 1 John and uh, about the anointing, which, uh, so that is also another place where we uh, read about false teaching and so on. So here, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1, uh, but there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. Okay, so these are some markers, right? Um, and the Lord Jesus said, "You will know a true, uh, you know, tree by the fruit." So, um, the kind of uh, life they lead, and so on. So, here are some markers that uh, that uh, they are, the Apostle Peter is saying that there will be false teachers who will bring in destructive teaching right secretly bring in which means that um, you know they they know that it is something you know or, or why to bring in you know bring something in or teach something in in secret or in, in a in a in a way that's um, you know hidden from others right so it is a secret secretly they which is brought in but these are destructive and these are heresies which deny the lord okay so which deny the Lord that, that bought them. So uh, making making light or esteeming lightly the Lord himself or even denying, you know, completely ruling out. So maybe the cross and everything, you know, is, is not given importance. And so this is the nature of the, uh, you know, of the heresies that are brought in and bring on themselves swift, swift destruction. Okay, uh, so Revelation two twenty again a warning about uh, this woman Jezebel. Uh, so he's saying, you know, uh, I have a few things um, the Lord says against this church, and which church is that? Let's just look there. Uh, Revelation chapter two. Yeah, so this is um, the corrupt church, right? Thyatira, I think. Yeah. So um, he said, uh, you know, you love this person, I love Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to, you know. The, so the, the depth of false teaching, you know, the extent to which uh, the false teaching was tolerated in this church of fellowship, right? Um, so it is the church in Thyatira. But this was happening. Um, so you you see here, here was a woman who was teaching, right? So again, you know, about women in ministry, uh, who was teaching the wrong thing. But here was a person you know, who was a woman and who was who was teaching, right? So it says, you allow this woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, so a ministry of the prophet and also, you know, teaching. So you're allowing her to teach and and. But the teaching is in sharp con uh, contrast to 
teaching that accords with godliness it is it is not that at all it's saying you allow her yeah, to teach and seduce and commit sexual immorality things offered to idols okay charles yeah you have a question yeah i'm uh, inquiring about this jezebel mm. was this a real woman that was preaching and teaching or it was the spirit of jezebel as seen from the book of first kings is it first kings or that one the wife of yeah, it, eh of ehab yeah ehab and jezebel yeah so so we see there are two different people of course obviously um so um so here is is a person who was actually in church teaching uh, she uh, called herself a prophetess and so on so um yeah it's referring to this person here and uh, but both are real people right whenever we see uh, you know jezebel being mentioned uh, in these two places uh, these are real people and also um, uh, i know that you know uh, we talk about the spirit of jezebel um like uh, in um, in spiritual warfare and so on so um so it is obviously an an evil spirit which uh, you know which does these things um so yeah so that's the that's the thing right so but here it's talking about a real person as also you know we see in, in the book of kings about ahab's wife real person yeah charles does that uh, help thank you pastor yeah okay right okay so uh, so we see all these instructions about uh, teaching about teachers uh, we see uh, you know in the in the new testament in the the early church and all this was happening and uh, uh, and so it's it's for us uh, to uh, you know for us to follow for us to make it part of our uh, uh, part of our life uh, part of our teaching even um so uh, for those of us who are called into this kind you feel i feel called to um to do the ministry of a teacher you know i, I get i get i'm so passionate about it every time i get so excited about revelation and uh, uh, a revelation as in you know uh, uh, a teaching uh, something that is revealed and uh, and uh, i you know this is something that's something that's passionate and i i want to go into the depths of scripture i i, I have these questions you know why war, why where who and I, i want to you know get into the depths and also you know you see you feel that okay every time i read scripture i seem to get this uh, you know revelation this uh, uh, you know something that's um, that goes a layer by layer and a uh, depth of uh, what i've seen and i feel that god is teaching me these is showing me these things and and i feel a burden to teach you know i, I want people to uh, to be mature i and that the same things that i've learned i feel that i i need to share with them and i am excited doing that um uh, and so on so you know if if that is something that's growing in you um you know you feel that uh, maybe god is calling you into you know that kind of a ministry a, a teaching kind of a ministry and uh, so you just need to you know pray and pursue that right pray and pursue and say lord you know you show me and i want to i want to do this right um yeah um so the next chapter chapter 20 uh, chapter 8 in verse 22 is about the restoration of the ministry of the teacher so like we studied about uh, the restoration of the ministry of the evangelist we see that this was also something that um, uh, you know during that 400 like 1080 to you know uh, sorry 480 to 1480 till about 1500 you see that the church um, really losing this uh, losing these foundational truths uh, and going through what we call as the dark ages where there were this glimmer of hope and glimmer of light here and there but then by and large the church was really uh, uh, you know uh, not anything to be compared with the early church right there were a few individuals here and there um whom god raised up um but it was nothing compared to the early church right um but then we see that there is a restoration of the ministry gift 
uh, and it and it came in the way of people who would uh, who would teach you know who would establish uh, people in the doctrine establish churches or the people of god in the teaching in what was truth and uh, they would do so by means of letters by means of uh, uh, you know by means of a study of a particular topic or a, or a teaching and they would do that and and you know we see several listed here so we're going to come back to this uh, i'm not going to go into this and i would just want you to you know uh, since it's something that you can read and understand and uh, you know these are facts i just want you to go through it but we will look at it uh, a little later probably next class um but i what i want to really uh, share right now is uh, in chapter 9 okay uh, so the some of the practical keys to doing the ministry of a teacher we'll we'll look at this and then we will come back to chapter 8 and and look at a few things there uh, about the restoration of the ministry of the uh, of the teacher um but let's look at chapter 9 which is page 24 and uh, some of the practical keys to doing to, to doing the ministry of a teacher you know in line with the instructions that we just read which was there for in the early church that we read about the teaching and doing the ministry of the teacher you know some of the practical things is um uh you know for us to uh, really develop a passion for uh, revelation knowledge passion for the word of god and the teaching and instruction that is there in the word of god to uh, to develop a passion you know to be hungry for more and uh, and obviously that would come when we expose ourselves more and more to the word of god when we expose ourselves meaning uh, you know when we sit down and when we read and uh, uh, when we do that on a regular basis we find that uh, our hunger uh, increases even more right because uh, he does satisfy the hunger right he, he says that he will pour um, like uh, water on dry land those who hunger and thirst for him so he will satisfy that hunger and uh, and but the thing is that that even that whole experience of a hunger being satisfied spurs us on for, for more of uh, his, more of the truth and more of god's word right um and matthew 13 verse 52 uh talking about the teacher you know every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom is like a household who brings out of his treasure both uh, things both are new and old, right? So something um, from the old dispensation, something from the new, and uh, which was which is relevant and which which is applicable, and and uh, so the, he's talking about you know how a teacher uh, brings brings that our scribe instructed concerning the kingdom, okay? one who knows the truth about the kingdom, brings that out. Okay. Uh, one other thing that we see is, uh, you know, we're talking about hunger level. Um, you know, if you look at Mark chapter 4, while the Lord um, talks about the parable of the sower, and uh, after explaining that, um, the, um, you know, uh, okay, um, um, yeah, um, if you come to verse 24, okay, uh, he explains about how a, a lamp that is lit need not be put under a, I mean, should not be put under a, a basket but or under a bed, but on a lampstand. In verse 23, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then he said, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has to him more will be given, and whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. Okay, so uh, so this, this is the thing: saying, take heed what you hear, and with the measure that you use, it'll be measured to you. So which means that uh, you know what is the measure that we use in order to hear, because there is always more. Okay, uh, because God is infinite in His wisdom, in His knowledge, and uh, and what is the measure that we are using? You know, is it uh is it something like uh you know, like uh you know is that the measure that i'm using or is it something something bigger you know figuratively speaking right when we go to him is is it a small one is it uh, is it a big measure that we go with because it talks about our uh, uh you know how intentional we are about wanting to hear wanting to receive 
uh, with the intention of you know doing it of course with the intention of knowing with the intention of knowing him more um, what is the measure that we use okay so it says here that the the same measure with the same measure you use it will be measured to you and to you here more will be given so that's the promise and uh, i remember you know many times when we you know when we uh, let's say you prepare a message to speak and you you you've put down everything that god's been leading you to put down and everything that you've been you know that's been happening in your life you know god's been teaching and you put down and uh, you know this verse comes to my mind like over and over again right so sometimes we think okay that's it i guess you know that's it for for this particular you know message that's it um but then you know we can always go right with the measure so that's the measure that you know we use saying okay okay that's it maybe uh, but then if the measure is more there's no end you know so so till the last moment till the last minute till the last uh, you know till we step up and actually start sharing we can we can be hearing right uh, and we can still be receiving okay and that can be the measure um, and the lord can be you know will be tweaking certain things here and there uh, will be giving certain inputs uh, our, uh, and also certain words of knowledge um, uh, and also, you know, the direction in which uh, everything should go, and, and it can be a constant thing, right? And also, even during the uh, during the actual time of ministry, as we share, uh, we can continue to be hearing, continue to, you know, have that big measure, so to speak, in order to receive, right? So, with the measure that we use, it will be measured to us. Right? And to him who hears, more will be given to hear. So, um, so as a as a teacher, you know, these are some practical things. So we we don't have to put a lid, we don't have to um, you know put a ceiling on ourselves because God does not. Right? So this is this is his perspective when it comes to giving us or teaching us and showing us things from uh, the Word and the deep things. Uh, you know, he wants to reveal um, through the work of his spirit. He wants to reveal. So, um, so while we are, you know, so we don't have to have any limits. Um, we don't have to put, uh, you know, a ceiling uh, uh, on ourselves and say, okay, uh, I am unable to understand. Or you know, the Lord will teach, and also we don't have to put a limit saying this far and no more. Because the Lord will take us, you know, further. Right. So we see this. So. Um, so the hunger to know the why, the the where, the what, and the how, right? Um, but we also know, you know, the other side is that knowledge, if it's not um, mixed with the love, right? If it does not, uh, you know, if, if we do not have the love and the compassion for, I mean, love for God and love for his heart, right, for the people, then... It has the ability, uh, uh, you know, to stir up the flesh. I'm talking. We're talking about knowledge. You know, the big word is gnosis, meaning, uh, you know, knowledge, understanding, and uh, and so we need to be uh, careful. And uh, so Paul writes to the Corinthians, and in chapter eight, he's actually talking about those who have understanding. Uh, about food offered to idols. He's talking about that. That is the context, right? He's talking about, you know, now concerning you know, things offered to idols. And uh, he gives a perspective, you know, we know that an idol is nothing, food offer, food also is nothing, it doesn't commend us to God and so on. But then he adds, he says, you know, knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. And if anyone thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing as yet as he ought to know. Okay. So, uh, so the thing is, the reality that uh, you know, if you're not careful, then you know, because of learning and because of uh, everything, you know, knowledge, you know, it can make us proud and and arrogant, maybe, and that will be the end of it, right? When we reach a place of saying that I have, I know, I know a lot, or I know everything there is to know. Paul says, you know, if you don't, uh, you know, if he thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing. There is a lot more for us to know, so uh, so he says that, and and love edifies love. So um, you know, knowledge with love is a powerful combination. 
extremely powerful combination right because you will uh, one will teach with compassion one will teach with uh, with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with with god's heart right with god's uh, heart for the person um, not with the thing of uh, demonstrating one's own intelligence so pride has no place but with the right motive and attitude to to help the person edif- be edified to uh, to let the person be grounded okay so like paul uh, says um, he also says that you know that we might present every man perfect in christ now this is this is how we minister um to so that um we might present every every man perfect in christ so that is a you know that is the heart with which uh, paul ministered and how he taught and so on right so uh, yeah so develop a passion uh, keep that alive keep that fire going um, the other thing that we see is uh, to um, to develop a range of things you know to range of topics and not to restrict ourselves to one you know one topic or be an expert in you know one thing or uh, maybe uh, you know be an expert in one area right because uh, and look at scripture as something that's wholesome and uh, so develop a wide range you know whatever the scripture is talking about you know especially if the lord has called for the ministry of the teacher and you know that is the ministry gift of uh, you know the teacher to to practically to intentionally look at all these things you know to look at what is it yeah uh, what are the different things that he's talking about uh, you know um about uh, in the old testament you know about in the new testament and uh, um different things that we can you know about um, maybe the in christ uh, revelation uh, maybe the holy spirit um, and also about uh, several things about prayer and intercession and worship and and you know develop depth in all that as well as much as uh, we develop the width uh, the range being you know you develop the width but also to develop in that because there is more in each of these um, topics right um the other thing that we see a uh, practical thing is to question inquire investigate and search um so to to look into the word to uh, to ask the lord uh, uh, but to have an inquiring uh you know mind to to look at uh, scripture to to look at uh, you know sources to whom the lord will you know uh, you know bring across and and to look at uh, it and and not to so the the, the the two ways you know sometimes when when we look at questions uh or when we uh when we um, when we question certain things okay we're not questioning you know the nature of god we're not questioning uh, his existence we're not questioning that you know um so as a teacher you know we are looking at it um uh under or with the guidance of the holy spirit so it means we are partnering with him as he or or submitting to him to his authority as he shows us as he leads us and uh, and the thing is that it it could be about you know it could be about his existence right um questions about his existence questions about the existence of things now the existence of the universe existence of god you know several things but it's in submission to him and under his authority that we that you know that we look at these things right so um it's not uh, outside of that authority right so we are we are talking about the ministry gift and it is something that the lord wants established in the church which means as a teacher you know you, uh, that uh, but the lord is pleased when we when we ask questions the lord is pleased when we investigate certain things and and look at it and why is it so the lord is pleased because he he is you know look at it he is establishing like the the ministry gift he's the one who's giving this gift right so so it's not it's not wrong to ask questions you know it's not wrong to investigate it's not to doing that but there's a subtle difference because um, you know we uh, we can do it as someone who's uh, under the authority 
of God, or we can do it from a place of uh, from a place of rebellion, right? Um, and so, on. so that's uh, that's the thing, right? To in- in- investigate, to search, and uh, and uh, and uh, and to really study and to get in the depths of it. Okay. The other thing is to uh, keep the when it comes to sharing um, the truth, or when it comes to sharing the the content, uh, to keep it simple. Okay. Uh, now that is really we we see another aspect of the teaching gift, right? To to keep it simple. Um, you know, once we had an exercise, uh, I remember that um, this was at one of the camps that I had attended. So there was given a topic, and we were supposed to imagine that we were teaching the kindergarten, you know, students or um, you know, the really young ones, and teaching them complex things. You know, the topics given would be you know the second coming, or you know uh, about salvation or by salvation through by grace through faith and things like that uh predetermination and and things like that but we had to you know uh imagine that we the, uh, that our audience is really really young and we had to uh you know we had to do that explain them and it was it was a really good exercise where you know we had to make sure that it was free of jargon but free of technical terms, uh, free of uh, you know, all that, and then explain the nuts and bolts in very, very simple language. Use illustrations that that, that person would understand and then teach it. So it's a, it's a great exercise if, if you want to try it out. But really, the teaching gift is, is not only to go to depths of revelation, knowledge, and understanding as God leads, but also to be able to communicate that in uh, simple terms in simple language, um, that like just like the Lord did, right? And uh, and that's uh, and that's how the gift operates. So you know that wow, uh, oh, this is uh, this is great things. Um, these are great things that are being taught, and uh, uh, and it's it's the simplicity uh, of the complex things that are being communicated, right? So so that also is a, is an ability that we can uh, we can learn, is, is, we can develop. Sorry. That also is an ability that we can develop, you know, um, intentionally, uh, and of course, we can ask God. God, I every time I speak, you know, it just comes out in in a jumble. It, it just comes out complex things uh, in complex ways. Um, so help me. Right. So the thing is um, uh, to be sure of it ourselves, right? And that way, the communication of that will be very simple. You know, if it's very very clear. If we are uh, extremely sure of what we are communicating, of what we are sharing, then the sharing of it will also be can be simple. You know, intentionally, if we think about it, we can make it simple. Um, yes, definitely. You know, we have terms which um, you know we found that you know when we are making these uh, when we are when we are translating. Right when we are when we are doing this short term Bible colleges, we're doing it in several places and uh, you know like Champa and Satisgarh and, and also in Varnasi and uh, you know doing so you suddenly you realize that you, you're using words uh, you know which are difficult for the translator and also like you you may have a translator who's not very experienced and so on and you you don't have a you know you so you have to really break down break it down. Get into the nuts and bolts of it, which might require more effort, um, and also use illustrations that are uh, relevant uh, and also something that the audience can understand. You know, in the culture, um, that is something that they can relate to, right? So then you realize that it, it's taking a lot out of you, right? You need to break things down. You need to make it simple. So, um, so uh, the teaching. These are things that we can develop. Uh, that when we when we look at it and say, okay, how how do I make it simple? You know, how do I make it uh, um, uh, make it relevant, make it simple, and so that it's communicated well, uh, and also it sits well, right? It it is it. We're making that effort to uh, to share whatever we are sh- sharing, uh, so that it it is anchored in the hearts of people, right? right. So we're not saying something, sharing something, so that it's uh, well. 
it's done. <laughs> I've done my job. Which is making sure that it is understood, it is received, it is understood. Um, so that is what the teacher does, right? uh, questioning, asking, clearing, uh, whatever uh, you know, wrong ideas and so on. Um, so uh, with that in mind, you know, so you keep the things simple, right? Uh, the other thing is also to keep the revelation fresh, which means that as a teacher, you stay fresh in the word of God. What does that mean? That means to to stay connected, to uh, to to continue to go over things that already God has taught, uh, already God has shown, God has revealed. But you continue to you know ask Him and and ask for a fresh understanding, fresh revelation, uh, and um, and really for the touch of the Spirit on those things that He's already you know taught. Um, and to get his confirmation on that, to for them to breathe life, um, to, to breathe the life of the spirit on some of those things, right? And uh, which will which will really be a blessing to the hearer. Okay, so um, so the thing is that uh, we ask for revelation. Revelation need not be something completely new, like we saw. It can be an addition to something which has already been taught, or emphasis on something that has already been taught to us right so that that emphasis is also something that is new and fresh so um, so we keep ourselves fresh uh, in the word and we 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 keep ourselves in a place where we are receiving from god which we means that we keep our lives free of offense right we keep our lives free of uh, free of those things that that block us right uh, from receiving from God, uh, maybe it's offense, maybe it's uh, you know even unforgiveness and um, things like pride, right? Because it says uh, in the book of James, you see James five that God says God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble, right? So so that's the thing when God resists something, um, I just can't imagine that, right? It's like uh, well, you try as you might. Uh, Nothing is happening. Like try as we might, um, nothing is moving. So it says that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So the verse is, um, sorry, I said James 5, it's, it's James 4, and uh, uh, verses, uh, verse 6 and 7, verses 6 and 7, he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, uh, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, the whole thing of being staying humble, staying uh, submitted to God, right, uh, which will keep us in that place of receiving uh, more from Him. Right? So, it's all interconnected. Uh, being humble, keeping our heart pure, and uh, uh, keeping our lives free of offense, free of those things which uh, which hinder us, and uh, just to make sure that you know we are we are hearing um we are uh, receiving from him right um okay a, a couple of other things uh, practice before we teach which means put into practice live it out before we even uh, begin to teach it right um, you receive something and god is saying okay this is what it is but you live it out uh, i need to live it out myself uh, before i actually bring it well Without living it out, I can bring it, but uh, it doesn't. It will not have the authenticity, and I may not have that kind of a conviction and authority to teach, right? So, uh, and we will realize that, right? and uh, the hearer will also realize it. So, live it out before you actually teach it. And lastly, you know, be teachable. Be in that place of being uh, taught by God, um, receiving. Uh, and not just taught by God, you know, that uh, personally, but also from, uh, you know, uh, from others, right? Now, if we are offended with someone, then we actually, you know, close that gate, close that door, uh, for God to work through that person, right? So, which is why, you know, we, uh, let's say, you know, you're in a church, you're, in a, and then you're offended with, 
the one who's uh, you know ministering it's uh, it's highly unlikely to receive anything right because we we are offended we and in, uh, in natural terms you think about it you know you don't want to receive anything you know you're you're doubting whatever that person is saying and you don't want to receive anything um so uh, we are offended you know i'm not saying don't be discerning but you know to be in a place of offense to stay in that place of offense we are actually closing uh, ourselves from receiving so to be teachable is to you know to to stay uh, uh to humble before god and also to whomever through whom he will teach and i think i've shared this once uh, uh with this class but you know where um, this person was um who was my colleague and uh he was always you know getting excited and telling uh, you know sharing about this and that and the other and new things and and so on so uh, and and I, I would switch off right halfway through the conversation just switch off uh you know get distracted think about other things but then uh, very clearly the lord was you know speaking to my heart said listen to him and i want you to listen to him and uh, and that's when uh, you know i realized yes you know uh, well god can want uh, god can you know uh, uh, work through anyone uh, and also um, you know if we if we are careful and if we are obedient then then there's a blessing right uh, in being taught by god uh, another play in another time uh, this happened in in one of the churches where i went to i i went there because there was some i think it i i forget the you know instance but i i had to be there um, i think just to meet the couple or uh, so I, i was there part of the service and then i saw the speaker he was a guest speaker and um, you know i i saw him is very uh, i think this also maybe i would have shared but i saw him is very serious right very serious expression um uh, and uh, with glasses and he had a tie and you know is very formally dressed and i was like oh man you know he's going to he's going to bore bore us today uh pressure you know just by looking at him and uh, and he was uh, i said okay today it's going to be it's going to be tough to sit through this sermon and so uh, but the minute he opened his mouth and shared uh, it was fresh it was like it was like a drink of cold water on a summer day right it was so fresh so apt uh, it was yes he was serious but it was uh, it was just scripture that he shared and um, it was timely it was uh, it was just scripture there was there was no joke there was nothing he, he didn't do any tricks to you know keep us listening uh, keep us attentive nothing at all you know no story you know probably just straight away went into the message but you know i remember it still because i i see that you know god really ministered to me and i right in, you know into that first few seconds you know i was just repenting so i saying god i'm so sorry i shouldn't have you know um uh, i shouldn't have had that bias this prejudice against this person based on their appearance and 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 you know um uh, and the expression but so the thing is this you know if i had remained in that place or maybe left the church you know i would have missed that blessing of being taught by god um so when it comes to being teachable you know we we remember this you know that we don't We don't, we don't become biased we don't uh, you know have this prejudice but um, because god can speak and god will speak through you know uh, the most uh, i don't know most uh, unexpected you know people and uh, yeah so that's that's for us to uh, as teachers to remain teachable right okay so we'll stop here and uh, next week when we come back we'll look at uh, the restoration of the teaching ministry and uh, Uh, but i i just like you to read through please and uh, i'll just touch about a few points here and there and move on to the next chapter right okay so we'll stop here have a have a great week and god bless thank you okay. thank you so much pastor god bless um sorry prabhaka you did you say did you ask anything no no pastor i said thank you so much Oh okay god bless yeah see you <laughs> bye bye take care